Welcome to LAVO's VSM video training series on panel building. So looking at our master view at the moment, notice that we have two tabs along the bottom. We have the primary virtual matrix and also the physical layer known as the video layer. You will notice that we've added some additional signal path sources and targets. We've done this to simulate more of a real practical installation and a situation where you'll have to scroll left to right and up and down. You can see here that we've created the target known as server with four inputs each for three servers, thus an additional 12 targets. We've also created additional sources, including the outputs of these three new servers with two outputs per server, as well as two outputs for each character output from the server. We've also created a number of patchable inputs and patchable outputs. So, let's say our facility just bought a new multi-viewer card. Therefore, we'd like to give it an additional 12 inputs. To do this, let's go into our signal path window and right click and go to new signal path. Now let's call this multi-viewer and start at 17. In this case, we don't need to use iterators because we can just tell VSM that we are adding 12 signal paths by entering 12 in the amounts window. VSM will automatically then add them in the proper numerical order. These will belong to the signal path family multi-viewer. Now click next. On this screen, we'll denote that these are router outputs. And also it's important to remember that here in the center column called signal path, this is not the router. This is the actual multi-viewer device. So here in this example, router outputs feed into the left-hand side of the multi-viewer. We'll start at router output 101. And we'll click Next through the series of additional windows until we hit Finish. Now, when we look at our signal path list, we'll see the additional multi-viewers added at the top of the target list. But again, notice they have not yet been assigned into the virtual matrix. When we're building panels, it's always nice to have the various targets and sources grouped together. For example, the multi-viewers grouped together, the servers grouped together, patches grouped together, and so forth. In part, this is where the signal path families are helpful. We have this kind of power in the virtual matrix. Now, as you can see in the actual physical matrix, things are scattered around in a much more chaotic sort of fashion. That's because these signals directly relate to connectors such as VNC or XLR connectors and other physical sources and targets. That's why we like to use the primary virtual matrix because we can organize our signal paths in a way that is more logical and easier to understand and find signals that we need. So let's go into our layout tab and add the additional new multi-viewers that we've created to the target section of the matrix. First, let's select these new multi-viewer signals in the signal path list. We left click on multi-viewer 17 and while holding the shift key on your keyboard down, left click on multi-viewer 28 the last one in our selection. Now we drag that over into the primary virtual matrix layout section. We would like to drop these new signals in the multi-viewer target section immediately after input 16. However, notice we can't do that. So what we do is while still dragging over our new signals, we press the shift key and then release where we'd like them to begin. VSM automatically creates the space to fit them all in. Now notice, the names that we use for these new multi-viewer signal paths are different than the ones we are using for 1 through 16. To fix this, we can export these labels in a text file, edit them in a spreadsheet or similar text editor, and bring them back into VSM in a format that we'd like. We'll get to that handy feature later. For now, let's move on. So again, notice on our physical layer, as we scroll left to right, we see all the physical connections in a varied and rather unsorted order. However, when we click into our primary virtual matrix, we see a much more organized layout, something that we've created ourselves and that you can customize as much as you need to for the configuration you're building. This primary virtual matrix is very customizable. For example, let's say that you want the character outputs of the servers grouped with the primary server outputs. So in this example, what you do is left click and hold on the signal you'd like to move and then press and hold the shift key. Then move your mouse over to where you'd like to put the signal and release the mouse. You again click and drag the server character output 
bring it up to the primary server outputs, press the shift key, and release the left mouse button. The primary virtual matrix can be built to show exactly what you want to see. It is entirely customizable. Now you can see our primary virtual matrix is getting decidedly larger, which makes it harder to find the signal paths you're looking for. So there are multiple ways to search and find what you need in a quicker, more surgical fashion. Let's take a look at a few of those options, which when you start to build panels, you'll be glad you have. For example, if you're looking for something particular, let's say in this case the patch, let's select any destination, and then press F3. When the window comes up, type in, in this case, patch. If the word exists, VSM will directly jump to the first instance of that word. This can be done on a variety of layers, including the one you're currently looking at, or via the drop-down you can select other layers, or if you want to search across all layers, just select the All option. Another option are using what are called jump points. Jump points are extremely handy to have in VSM. For example, let's create a jump point for the first camera target. First we right click on the first target for cameras and then select set or edit jump point. When the window comes up you'll see you have the option to use the signal name. That sometimes is appropriate but other times you want to be a little more clear. In this case we'll rename the signal name simply to cameras. When we click away from this camera target, you'll notice that camera 1 is grayed out slightly. That's because now there's a jump point set for that signal. Let's create some additional jump points. In this case, starting with the frame sinks, and also starting with the video monitors. You'll notice, always to get to the drop-down menu, we right-click on the signal path. Let's say, for example, while you're typing in your jump point that you've created a typo. No problem. Go back to that jump point, right-click, and go to the Set or Edit Jump Point option, and then simply rename it to what you meant to name it in the first place. Additionally, let's say that you've created a jump point where you didn't really want one. No problem. Go back to that jump point you don't want, right click on that, and again select Set or Edit Jump Point. Simply delete all the text in the window and hit OK. That jump point is now removed. Let's create a couple of more jump points now. And notice that you could have hundreds of jump points or just a few. It really depends on how granular you want to be when designating jump points for your signal paths. So as you can see, having jump points really does make your life a little bit easier. Let's explore some of the additional capabilities a right click of your mouse will give you in the primary virtual matrix. First, let's make sure we're in the Layout tab. You saw earlier how it's possible to drag groups of signals from the signal path list into the primary virtual matrix and using the shift key to insert them in an area where there's no room. Now we can also create individual columns or rows manually. Let's go down to our sources and manually insert a couple of new rows. We can do this anywhere, whether it be on an existing signal or on an empty space. In this case we'll choose source number 11 and we'll right click and insert row. That was easy. Now on top of 12, let's right click, insert another row. And on 13, insert another row. Now what if we've added too many rows? That's okay. Right click on what you'd like to remove and simply select remove row. And then confirm. Additionally, if you'd like to remove a couple of rows, left click on the first item, hold the shift key down on your keyboard, and left click on the last item, and then right click on the grouping and select Remove Rows. Confirm, and now they're gone. We'll show now in targets that's equally possible. 
insert columns very quick very simple let's remove four of them using the shift key remove columns and confirm notice of course it's also possible to remove an actual signal in this case we will not confirm we'll say no you can also insert a signal in the midst of existing signals for instance right here in this case we've added a blank one between 4 and 5 and again we can remove that and confirm let's say that we have a column with a signal assigned to it we want to remove the signal without removing the column that's easy over here on frame sign 10 I'll right click and select clear column then I'll confirm and now frame sign 10 is gone but target 21's position remains let's do that under sources with CCU1. I right click clear row, confirm, and now CCU1 is gone, but we still have a space named source 12.